So, hello and welcome to see how to operate the Colido 3.0 printer. As you can see, they all have been named. There's a Daisy over there, then there's Donald, and over here we have Goofy. The way they work is that you have a filament on a filament spool, and the spool is uh, close to the machine. And then it goes to the hot end onto the table, and the table is heated so that the uh, extruded material sticks better to the table. And uh, then you just have to wait until your print is done. But I'll show you the parts of the printer first, and then I will explain how to use this with the Repetir host uh, machine. Mm -hmm. The difference between uh, the 3.0 and the do-it-yourself model, DIY, the yellow model, is that this one actually has a user interface right here on the machine, which you can operate with this, uh, this uh, rotary encoder that has also a button, so that you can select the menu item and press the button, and then you uh, can do stuff. And I will show you how to change the wire by using that. Uh, that capability. <clears throat> so the printhead is here, it moves in the uh, x direction and in the y direction, and the print table moves in the uh, z direction. The print table has three screws, one in here, one in here, and one in here, that are used to calibrate the machine, and I will show you how to calibrate it as well. And it is connected to this uh, controller computer here right next to it that has Repetir host on it so uh, you do not have to use the memory card method this also has a memory card reader but it's easier for you to um, do all your slicing here on the slicing software and then uh, just use the USB cable to start your print and also to kill your print if, if that's what, need, what is needed um, but yes, let me show you what happens when you turn this on. So when you turn on this device, <coughs> you will see that the display lights up. And in a moment it will show you uh, the menu, which uh, you can access by pressing the menu key. It also starts to make a noise, which I'm not aware uh, of why it does it. But as soon as you connect your uh, as soon as you connect your computer by clicking on this connect button here on the top, and you get a connection to the printer, it stops making that noise. So now we have a connection. But if I wanted to change the filament, for example, I can press on the button here and in the prepare menu click on that it will say change filament click on that I want to unload my filament click on that and it is PLA filament now you can see how the table starts to come down and it also turns on the the uh, print head heat up to 190 degrees or so and after that you can unload your filament the reason it says check filament in here error check filament is because I am currently leading the wire from above and here behind the machine there is a black box which is the uh, sensor for the wire it would be a better idea to lead the filament from behind and under this box there's a hole in the box just go in insert the wire in this box and after that the machine in principle knows that it has wire but it's not strictly necessary because it doesn't know anything how to do anything with it anyway and currently we are at uh, 24 degrees we are aiming at 205 degrees and once we have the 205 degrees in there it will then retract the wire uh, <coughs> in case you want to retract the wire manually there is a lever here which you can depress 
once you have the heat. You can do nothing with the filament if you don't have the heat in, in the region of 200 degrees. But currently we are 65 degrees, it's going to take some time still. But I could depress this lever here and pull out the wire, change the wire and push the wire back in until it stops. And then I could use the manual controls on a repetitive host to feed the wire into the machine. Or if you want to, you can use this interface here that I just showed you. This one to actually load the filament. So there are many ways of getting stuff done in here. This is going to take some time. I will pause the video for a moment. So we are currently arriving at 205 degrees. And that means we can uh, depress the lever here. And pull out the wire. Now, before you feed a filament again into the machine, you need to make sure that you cut this so that it is not, um, it's not like molten at the end and straighten it up a bit and then push it into the hole on the top of the printhead. I'll give you more access to it now. This is the hole that I mean. Push it in there. And then in the repetitive host control software, you click on the feed 50 millimeter button. Now, if you place your finger here like this, you can feel that the printer is actually is actually eating the wire. And when you come down, you can see when the filament starts to get extruded down here. I'll feed a little more, 20 millimeters. And now you can see how there is extrusion happening over here. So that is the basic uh, method for changing the filament. And now I will show you how to calibrate this machine. For calibration, you go back to the menu and you go to uh, uh, prepare. You go into calibrate mode, you click on this, and now it will, it will uh, take the table up to the correct height. And after that, it will move the printhead into four locations and you will have to use a piece of paper to uh, get the proper height between the print head and the print table. So we are now at the first location. So now I will need something to print. Here in Repetir Host, I will place the calibration disk 10 centimeters and go into my slicer tab. And in here, I can see that the print settings are currently at 0.2 millimeters per layer height, 30% uh, infill and rectilinear 50. Now, rectilinear is uh, for the infill type, and the 50 is for the speed of the print head. Now, in these printers, 60 is the absolute maximum. You don't go past that. And on the filament settings, I have PLA 1.75 millimeters, which is, of course, the only one you can use in these. 205 degrees on the print head and 60, de uh, um, 60 degrees on the table. This should be fine, so I will slice with slicer. And I will now see that I need 58 centimeters of wire. And when I go to click print, it will start to heat the print uh, bed, which is currently at 56 degrees. So when this one reaches uh, 60 degrees, it's going to start to print. So we can go up here and see how it's going to work. So 
first first the print head goes down uh, sorry the table goes down to uh, get the z altitude from the limit sensor that happens soon this is where it gets the z and then it goes up and since we have the correct heat in both the hot end and the table we will soon see actual extrusion and printing I'll just remove this piece of wire which was extruded during the testing And it's starting to print, and we can already see that we are too high. So I will turn on the screws, all three of them, about half a turn. And now it starts to stick to the table. Yes, and now all that remains is to be vigilant here by the printer and make sure that it doesn't get loose, because if it gets loose, there's nothing you can do except kill the print and start again, maybe add some glue to the table so that the, there is a bit more friction between the print head and the, and the table. But it seems to be properly um, aligned, it seems to be properly calibrated now so that we can just uh, wait and see while it's doing its magic. Uh, if you start to hear a knocking sound from the print head, it means that it's not feeding properly and you may want to, to try again with a more heat because it's, it's uh, struggling to push the material through the print head. I was still a bit high here, so uh, a bit low here, so I will uh, go a bit more high. Just to get that nice and smooth uh, print. This is not going to be the best of uh, samples, I can already tell, because it has some loose ends of the wire, extruded wire. But as this, this movie is just to show you how it actually works, um, it doesn't really matter how, how well it turns out. And that is pretty much what there is to it. Uh, we are now just waiting for the print to happen. It's going to take six minutes, so I will, I will pause the video for a while. So, as you can see, it's not going to be the most beautiful of prints, but I let it to run anyway, because I can now tell you that there are two issues here. One is that we are too high. The print head is too high from the table, and that means the uh, print will not stick to the table properly and there's also too little adhesion i.e. glue here on the right hand side you can see that there are prints parts of the print that are uh, separated from the other prints so to get this thing to work properly i would uh, kill this print and then turn the screws all three screws up maybe one third of a turn and then try again until I have a nice, complete adhesion to the table. I would also add some glue because this is already old, old glue. And with the, with the better glue, I hope I would be able to have a nice, solid print out of this. And now it's done, but it really doesn't look too well. But that's what 3D printing is all about. It's about trying out and testing. So this was uh, how to use the Collidor 3.0 and the next thing we're going to do is to look at uh, how to use the Scrooge, which is our 3mm filament dual extruder uh, professional quality printer.